What is a protein? Proteins are ubiquitous in life. Every major kingdom has and uses proteins to make themselves, to make life. You're probably more aware of proteins through media, through things like shampoo advertisements, now with proteins, now with pentapeptides. But what exactly is a protein? Well, they're amino acids. Lots of them. Glad we cleared that up. A protein is a string of amino acids put together to have a function. Two single amino acids will join together to make a peptide. This also releases water. Amino acid is an organic compound that has at least two carbons, a nitrogen, and two oxygen atoms. They are the proverbial building blocks of life because they have properties that make them extremely useful when making complex things. Amino acids have what is known as an R group. This is sort of the wild card and can almost be anything. An analogy might be to think of the R group as changing the flavor of the amino acid. Adding a single carbon to the R group makes alanine, which also makes the amino acid hydrophobic, meaning it doesn't mix well with water. R groups change the flavor of their amino acid. Some R groups make things more electropositive or electric negative, which means when you have two together joining a peptide bond, they will interact. There are 21 different side groups in eukaryotes. Certain groups of amino acids will lead to certain secondary structures. Our friend aniline, for example, is very good at making alpha helixes. This is where a stretch of amino acids form a helix structure. Another secondary structure is the beta pleated sheet. This is where instead of forming a tight coil, the amino acids line up in a strand and form a flat structure that pleats. If you were to look at an actual protein, its main structure is made up of these secondary structures of alpha helixes and beta pleated sheets. It's the structure that gives the protein its function. Protein structures can be broken down into four categories. Primary, which is just the stretch of amino acids. Secondary, the alpha and beta pleated streets. The tertiary, which is a combination of these secondary structures. And the quaternary structure, which is an amalgamation of these tertiary structures in a 3D formation, making what most people consider a full protein. Hemoglobin, for example, is made up of four separate tertiary structures. There is alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, and beta-2. These are made by three separate genes. There is the alpha-1 gene, which is HBA1, the alpha-2 gene, HBA2, and you guessed it, the beta gene, HBB. These tertiary structures of hemoglobin have a function where they'll attach elemental iron. This elemental iron is involved in the process that actually attaches the oxygen to the hemoglobin. The structural functions of proteins can be thought of as hair, skin, and other tissues. There's also possibly a more important function in enzymes. Enzymes are incredibly useful. Life couldn't exist without them. There's destructive and constructive enzymes such as saliva and DNA polymerase. A pro tip, by the way, if the suffix of a word ends in A's, it's probably an enzyme. But what do enzymes actually do? Well, if we look at this graph here, along the left we have the amount of energy required for a reaction to happen. Along the bottom we have the progression of this reaction. Say we want CO2 and water to combine. If we follow the black line, this is the energy required without an enzyme. We can see it's quite a large amount. However, if we were to look at the energy required with an enzyme, the energy is far reduced. This is what enzymes do. They reduce the amount of energy required to perform a certain reaction. So that's what a protein is. If you have any comments or want to ask a question, leave it down below in the comment section and I'll try and make a video about it. Next time, what is Alzheimer's?